hey guys welcome back to another video welcome if you're new don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get right into today's video so for today's video i'm bringing you guys another unboxing to start off the video um as you guys saw by the thumbnail the title and the brand name that's on the box this is from bt art box and i was so excited because they launched some new xl soft gel nails and you guys know how i love using these they're so easy to use the quality the look of them they're just so top tier so before we get into the nails i did just want to unbox everything that came in this um package so of course to go along with the nails you will need these gels so first we have the gel glue and this is what you use to apply the nails and then we also get a step one and step two step one is the builder gel and step two is the top coat to finish off your designs so now let's get into the nails um like i said i was able to pick out two of the newest xl lengths and i did just go with french tips i'm not really sure how many um designs come in these extra long lengths but i do know they do have french tips they have these two here that I got. I got the pink base and the nude base. And also I do know there is the brown base, which is like um, sort of like the nude, but it's, it's just like a deeper brown. And yeah, these nails are really great if you want to do your nails at home very fast. Um, these are the X-Coat tips, which comes in a 3-in-1 soft gel system, which is the tip primer, soft gel tip, and then also the base coat on top. So basically these nails are already prepped for you. Um, you don't have to do all of that to the nail because it's already done for you, which is what I like. Um, BT Art Box really makes it easy when it comes to these nails, which is why I really love it. Not only that, the quality is amazing. And then there you saw the instructions on the back. If you are new to it, you want to follow the steps or instructions. However, I do feel like this video will be very helpful so you don't have to read the steps. Um, but let's take a look at these nails. So this is like an up close of how they look. Like I said, I just got... Um, this simple french tip so elegant looking so neat and i really love this pink base like it's such a pretty cover pink um and then here's how the underside looks like i said these nails are already prepped usually when like working with other nails if they're not prepped underneath you might have to um etch the inside or add some primer or whatever the case may be but with these you don't have to do all of that and then the second one I got, like I said, are the ones with the nude base. And this here is a closer look. And I do have a discount code that you guys can use on the website if you want to check them out. And just like everything else, it will be linked down below in the description box. And not only do they have these on the website, I did see earlier this morning that they launched some really, really natural looking ones. Like they're really short and they look really good. I actually might just get those and try them out for you guys. Put them on my dominant hand. Because y'all know I do not do my dominant hand, but since I can't really work with long nails on my right hand, I could use those and like test them out. So if you are into the shorter lengths, definitely check those out. Um, they're in French tips in all color bases. Um, but yeah, now that we got all of that out the way, let's go ahead and get into our nail prep. I do like to start off by pushing back my cuticles with a cuticle pusher. This is going to push back the eponychium and reveal all of that cuticle left on the nail plate. And also you can flip the cuticle pusher to the other end and just scrape up any of the leftover product like you see me doing here. Next, I'm going to be taking one of my favorite bits. This is the mini barrel diamond bit from Kira Sky. And it does a wonderful job at doing what it needs to do. So this is going to remove the cuticle from the nail plate. And also, for some reason, I seem to have a lot of like leftover product like gel product around my cuticle whenever I pop my nails off. So I do like to use this bit to remove it. Um, and it's also going to be lifting that skin so you're able to get underneath it and also get you ready for the next step which is to cut your cuticles because like you want to lift up that skin because if you're trying to clip the cuticles away you might end up clipping some and it might hurt so you want to be able to lift it up so you can see exactly what you need to cut so when it comes to cutting my cuticles i don't do it pretty often i'm not like um a pro at doing this so i just clip what I feel like I should clip but once I lift up the skin using my diamond bit um, I can pretty much see what needs to be clipped away or what I think needs to be clipped away if you're not really sure I do advise you to like actually look at someone who's licensed and you know all of that stuff do not hurt yourself when it comes to cutting your cuticles 
if you are not comfortable with doing it there is like an alternative tool where you can just kind of like go around the cuticle um i don't know what it's called but if you know what i'm talking about you can find them on amazon but if you are willing to cut your cuticles the only way you will get comfortable is if you practice um so yeah just take that as you will but once I clip my cuticles, I do go in with a cuticle ball bit and just polish everything up. And this is basically like getting up everything that I missed and like buffing it away. And then the last and final step when it comes to my prep, I do like to use my mini mandrel drill bit. I like to go around my cuticle once again and just go over my nail plate to entirely remove all of that surface shine. Whether you want to do all of the previous steps I did before this one, this is the one you really have to make sure that you do. Um, it's just to remove the shine because if you have like oils, like natural oils on your nails or any leftover product, whenever it like goes to stick, it might not adhere properly because of the oil. It just will not mix. So whether it's using an e-file with a setting band, a hand file, a buffer, whatever you need to do, just make sure that you remove the shine from the natural nail plate. And then of course we go ahead and wipe that away with some alcohol and we are done with the nail prep. Um, and this is what my nails are looking like. If you do want your nails to last even longer, I do suggest that you go in with the hydrator and primer and then go in with some base coat. I did skip the dehydrator and primer because I did um, apply my peel off base coat. And then once you do that, you can go in with a thin layer of base coat and cure for 30 seconds. So now that my nails are all prepped and ready to go, um, I'm going to be using the pink ones because I've been seeing a lot of coquette inspired nails. I'm on Pinterest a lot and I see like a lot of coquette aesthetics. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right so forgive me if I'm not. Um, but I've been seeing like a lot of those aesthetics that like really soft pink feminine type of look and I just really love it so I'm glad that this is a nail trend that I'm able to try out. Um, and I just felt like the pink base would go perfectly for it because it is such a pretty soft pink. Um, and yeah, we're just going to start by sizing out the nails. I just love how convenient these nails are on this script. I don't know what BTR box would call this, but I'm just going to call it a script. And I just love how they're all on it. Um, the convenience without having to dig into like a nail box trying to find your size or like dig into baggies trying to find it. I just feel like this is just so convenient having them all there. You just go down the line, size out your nails until you are done. With these nails, you want to make sure they fit sidewall to sidewall. Um, once you place it on the nail, do not press down too hard because you don't want to force these nails to go down. If you do, whenever you start to apply them, you will need a little bit more room for that base coat um, or like the glue gel that you will be applying them with. So make sure that you don't press them down like super hard. Just lay it on the nail. If it fits, then pull it off like you saw me do. If you have one that's too small, always go down to the bigger size. If you can't seem to find one that fit perfectly, always go with the bigger size and customize it with a hand file. That's just going to give you the best results. So now that I got all of my nails picked out, I do have this BTR box curing lamp, which is great for flash curing. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug this in because I will be using it. I really love how the button actually works, so I'm able to turn it on and off. And to apply these, I'm going to be using the gel glue that came in like my packaging. This is not actually that specific one. I did have some already open, so I'm just using that until I run out of this one. But these nails are super easy to do. I like to start off with my pinky because when I do my thumb, I just feel like it could be in the way. So I just do my thumb last. But basically to start off, we will be just applying a little bit of that glue gel inside of the nail tip. What I feel like helped me out when it comes to... I'm trying to see how much gel to add into the nail tip. I just like to brush over that entire area. Usually I would just put like a dollop like right there at the tip part and try to estimate how much I would need. And sometimes it just end up spilling a lot. So what I like to do now is just basically adding a layer, just guessing how far up my nail is gonna go. Um, and just doing an even layer throughout that portion of the tip, if that makes sense. 
and then starting from my cuticle area i do go ahead and apply pressure towards the tip once i make sure that nail is straight i do go ahead and put it underneath my lamp and flash cure it with these lamps i feel like there is slightly an uncomfortable position when it comes to flash curing and it kind of helps if i elevate it a little bit so you did see me put it on top of my bling box and now i'm able to get to it a little easier and that's basically what i'm gonna do until i finish applying these over all of my nails super easy super fast this part the prep and applying them didn't take me no more than like 20 minutes I feel like if I was to do these like without recording, it would take me even less time. So just keep that in mind. These gel X nails are so easy to do at home. And also since we do have like a colored base, you don't have to worry about the gel not curing properly because there is somewhat transparency where you can see the gel start to like flow down to the tip. So you don't have to worry about that. These nails cure absolutely fine. And I just keep doing that same step until I get all of my nails applied. If you are into switching up your designs a lot, these will be great. Also, if you want perfect Frenchies without having to do them yourself, these are, like I said, great again. Because look at these Frenchies. They are absolutely perfect. I love them so freaking much. Um, and then once I get them all applied, I do go ahead and put them into my bigger lamp for a full 30 to 60 second cure. Just to make sure everything is nice and adhered. And yeah, once I have them all nice and cured... I am going to take a hand file and just remove like those little um, thingies at the top. I'm not sure what, what to call them, but they're from me popping them off of the script. You do want to remove them, so I take a hand file and just shape up my nails a little bit. I don't go over the sides because they are already perfect. Um, and then something else I like to do, this part is not really necessary, but I do it just because I like to. And usually I would use my mandrel drill bit to do this step, but I feel like my 5-in-1 taper bit is just a lot more effective. So that's what I'm doing here, just going around my cuticles. And um, also, this is the reason I would do this step is to like remove spillage. I really didn't have any spillage applying these, but like I said, this is just what I like to do. I just like to go around them and kind of thin them out a little bit make them a little bit more flush to my cuticle area and then once i finish i do go ahead and remove all of that dust and something else about these nails that i haven't really explained them since i used them apparently i've been doing this part all wrong not really wrong but there's just one step i kind of forgot to mention because i didn't really read the instructions but i did see like a tutorial video on the actual btr box instagram or tiktok wherever i've seen it and the builder gel step one so once you apply these you do want to go over the nails with the builder gel and this is going to give the nails a little bit more strength and structure because as you guys know builder gel has a more thicker consistency which actually makes a lot more sense but honestly i feel like these nails are good to go even without the builder gel like that is just how great the quality and stability um these nails are like they're just really great without it but however if you do want to add more strength to your nails or make them last longer go in with this builder gel and cure for 30 seconds like i did here and then once we are done with that i am going to do my design on top of this just because i feel like the builder gel was like a part of the nail application like if that makes sense so i did go ahead and do that first and now i'm going to do my design on top of that and then add on my top coat
So when it comes to my design, of course we are going to need a soft pink. So I did mix um, a pink from a cart and some of my Balm Nail White Gel Polish. Um, I did try the nail off camera, but that mixture was like really, really thin and it wasn't working. It was like very transparent on the nail. So I did get a little bit more of a thicker pink. Um, not a thicker pink, but like a more opaque pink. And then I mixed it with some white. You can kind of see it compared to the first mixture. Like it's a lot more opaque. Once I was satisfied, I was having a little bit of trouble when it came to doing my design. So I just did my first nail off camera. And I'm going to show you how I do it on the rest of the nails. So for the first nail, like I said, I am doing some coquette nails. And what I see a lot um, in those aesthetics are like lace. So what I decided to do is outline my French. And then I'm gonna go like on the French tip. I'm so glad these are pre-made French tips because it just saves me a lot of time, especially when it comes to doing designs like this. Um, but once I outline my French, I am gonna take that pink gel polish and just kind of do sort of like a plaid design. Not necessarily a plaid, but it's just like lines overlapping, vertical and horizontal. And then once I finish that, I'm gonna be like adding little loops to the inner part of the smile line area. And this is what's going to give it sort of like that lace vibe. When I finished my first nail, I wasn't sure how this was going to look. But I went ahead and cured it anyway. And I was just like, it always seems like that. So let's just go ahead and finish the rest of the designs. And then it'll all come together. So here's what I'm doing now. I'm just going ahead and finishing my loops. And once I get it all done all the way to the other side, I do go ahead and cure in the light to make sure that nothing messes up. And then I'll just be continuing that over all of my nails. For my ring finger, I'm not going to do like the plaid and the lace. I will be adding some rhinestones and pearls on this nail this is going to be my accent nail but i didn't want too much to be going on so i didn't do like the little loops in the plaid design i did just outline that french but for my pinky i will be again doing that lace look for my thumb it will be just like my ring finger and yeah that's basically how my nail art is gonna go um i really hope you guys are enjoying the video so far hopefully i'm not talking too much but for the rest of it, it's very simple and easy to follow. So I'll just let you guys go ahead and watch until I have to come back for the next part. If you are enjoying today's video so far, make sure to go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below. And now that I'm done with my design, I am going to take step two, which is the top coat and just go over my design. Since I'm basically done with it, um, of course, you want to do all of your nail art first and then go in with the top coat.
so for my bling i do want to add some pearls of course this wouldn't be a coquette design without pearls i also brought out my bling kit again and i'm just going to be putting some bling on my nails so i did pick out a bow charm which is going to go on my middle finger here you just see me adding some of my glue gel and just placing it where i want it to be once i have it centered placed to my liking i do go ahead and cure that in the light To apply my pearls and rhinestones, I am going to be using some of my not polish diamond glue gel to put like where, where I want them to be. Um, and then I just go in and place them how I want. So for this design, I did want it to kind of swerve a little bit, be a little bit curvy, but it didn't come out how I wanted it to be. Because once I place like the pearls and rhinestones down, sometimes like one hit will send them flying. I'm being kind of dramatic, but one hit will send them flying across the nail and it would just be so hard to reposition. So eventually I do end up getting them pretty decent to my liking. Um, and then I go ahead and cure and I'll be repeating that same process on my thumb, which I'll just let you guys go ahead and watch because I do have it sped up quite a bit. Like I said, with the placement of these pearls and rhinestones, it was very time consuming trying to get them how I wanted. Um, so I just finished working on my thumb off camera. Once I finished, I did go ahead and put them in the light to cure for 30 seconds. And now I'm going to be rubbing on some cuticle oil to re-nourish my cuticles. And once I rub everything in, this is how the finished set looks. And I love them. I think they look so adorable. And I feel like my lace came together a lot more than I gave them credit for. Um, I love this like soft pink baby doll look. 
I did add on like one single pearl on my pinky and index but I felt like a lot more charms or pearls could have brought this design out a little bit more um, but overall I am really satisfied with how they look I think they look really cute and also I love this nude length like I can really tell that these are longer compared to the other ones I've tried I love these a lot more because like y'all know I do love my longer lengths um so let me know what you think about these let me know if you um are gonna try these or not if you want to try them and if you want to try them again don't forget to check out my description box for my discount codes or links um and yeah that basically concludes today's video let me know what you thought about today's set um and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video bye